This video will demonstrate how to set up Jack Router for Windows 10 64-bit. We already have it set up, so I'll do a little show and tell who first, and then we'll go to the website for Jack Audio and show you how to download it, install it, get the driver registered, and a few other details on uh, setup for this. Here we're using the Katia Jack Audio Connection Bay from KX Studio. That's my favorite application since it names all the inputs and outputs for you. Otherwise you're just going to get numbers and then you'll have to figure out which one goes with which, but that's why I like Katia. So I'll describe my inputs on the left. We have microphone input, we have line input from my Realtek uh, native computer sound card. We've also created, using Synchronous Audio Router, some virtual audio cables and we have desktop audio this is now the default audio for like browser audio. Let me show you that real quick. We'll go to uh, Leo Laporte's site here. Get this set up. And let's see, here it goes. Coming up in this week, computer hardware, 10 cent SSD, Samsung S7, LG G5 goes modular, 5G LTE, Drobo, iSCSI, mechanical keyboard switches, and more. It's all coming up next on Twitch. Okay, so there's browser audio coming through the desktop audio output and virtual audio cable that we created with Synchronous Audio Router. You can name them whatever you like. You can put as many as you like in here. So we also have Mumble, a VoIP program similar to Skype, and we also have the Audacity with its own endpoints. There's Audacity. As you see, I have Audacity input through Synchronous Audio Router and Audacity output as its name of the virtual audio cable. Again, that's very useful. And inside here in this Jack Router, router connection bay, it's really nice to be able to see the name so you know where to wire it. Now in the middle, we have an application for Windows that actually has Jack support. So you don't have to use an ASIO driver to get in here into the Jack router. You can use Jack directly. It's one of the few that do. And it's just a, a synthesizer. And because we have this dash X Win MME at the bottom here, as part of the port audio command structure, it's going to bring in the Windows MIDI driver that Jack can use. And I'm going through a virtual MIDI cable right here, created by Loop MIDI. And all this stuff will be in the show notes if you're interested. So we've told VMPK here to use Loop MIDI port 2 as its output. That output comes into Capture 2 over to QSynth, and QSynth is using an acoustic grand piano, so we could change this to a Rhodes. And uh, very low latency, you, you, you should not, uh, at the settings that I have down here at 48K and 160 frame buffers, buffer frames, very, very low latency. I'd say it's less than 30 milliseconds, which is extremely useful when you're trying to uh, do a live audio or real-time recording. So that's the Q synth and above here we have music B and a test tone that are using the ASIO driver. Now to select the ASIO driver you look in your ASIO options for your program and look for Jack Router. I'll show you that using pedal board here. So we have the ASIO driver versus the other ones and look for Jack Router and select it. And when you when you click it and we're ready to go, it'll show up in the Jack Audio Connection Bay and you can wire things to it and from it. I like pedal board too since it, it's a bit simple. It also has these VU meters and level meters. So while we're in pedal board, as you see here, we have the microphone on top on inputs 1 and 2 and inputs 3 and 4. We have the line input and I'll show you that for a second. Stasis progress, something's happening with it. So we have an outside audio source coming into the line input jack of my computer sound card. It's nice to be able to use both the mic and the line input at the same time. Now for 5 and 6, that's the desktop audio. 
and it's going down here to an AGC circuit that keeps the volume steady at minus 12. You said that however you like, but with the variance in volume, I, it's nice to be able to set it so it stays the same whether it's too loud or too soft, so you don't have to keep messing with your volume knob. So you can set it and leave it there and then walk away and you don't have to come back all the time if something gets too loud or if you can't hear it, hear it anymore because they have a soft talker that just came on and you can barely hear them. Very useful application. It's a free VST plugin. And here's another meter. This, this level and this VU meter are both native to pedal board too. So that's, that's another reason I like this. Just helps you to see your audio adjusted. Another great advantage of Pedalboard 2 is when you save it, not only does it save all your applications and their settings, it saves the audio settings too. So it comes back just like you see it here, which is very nice. So that's the uh, Music B. Let me show you. This is one of the few applications that has ASIO output. And, it, and then it will stay in the jack audio connection bay even when you have it turned off or at stop. Some of them won't even show up in here, then you have to rewire it again, and that's that's not very useful. But Music B is one of the few that do. So we'll play this for a second. And very useful, nice. It's nice to have a audio that already has its own ASIO driver, so it shows up in, in Jack. The others were created, and the applications are using the WAS API driver, and there's, they're looking for whatever you named it through a synchronous audio router. And there'll be a video in the show notes here if you're interested in synchronous audio router. Synchronous audio router is not a prerequisite to getting Jack Router to work, but I find it extremely, extremely useful and would encourage you to try it too. Now in Pedalboard we have an input that we created with Synchronous Audio Router, Mumble Input. We have Synchronous Audio Router Mumble Output and it's coming in right here through 7 and 8 and also going to an AGC. So that the output of Mumble, whoever's on Mumble talking to you, whether it's loud or soft, again, it's going to be wherever you set it, and I like it about minus 12. So that comes in and it goes to the audio of output 1 and 2. But as you see here, we have mumble input at output 7 and 8. And this 7 and 8 here uh, corresponds to 3 and 4 here on pedal board 2. So if I wanted the microphone to go to the input of mumble, he would just draw a wire right about there here and take it to 3 and then the other one to 4. I'm not going to do that but that's how you do it and if you wanted the uh, line input same thing just take it and th whatever you put in 3 and 4 is going to go directly to the mumble input here and the reason it's showing up as 7 and 8 is because that's how I have it set here so the active output channels on pedal board, you just determine what they are. And that's what it shows up in here. But inside here, it's just going to count them one through, you know, sync, you sync and in sequence. A little test button. That's nice too. Okay, so that's enough about that. So let's go to Jack Router and get this done. Here's the Jack Router, Jack Audio Connection Kit. Scroll down to the Windows. I'm using 64-bit. There's the one I want. So download it. Once you've downloaded it, you have to register manually the Jack Router DLL for 64 bits. So to do that, we're going to go down here and type in CMD. You have to do it as admin. So run as administrator. Now we need to get over to the Jack Router 64-bit folder. So I'm going to set the microphone down and do that. You can watch me here.
Okay, now we're in the 64-bit folder, and we're going to do uh, initialize a command regsvr32 space jack router dot dll dll. And there you go. It's critical that everything is spelled correctly, or of course it doesn't work. So now that's registered. So now we can relax a little bit. Now let's get port audio to the desktop so we can apply the command structure to port audio. I'm going to show you how to use port audio, jack port audio here, and this command down here to set it up. Well, let me go over the command just a bit. Here's the ASIO driver. You have to tell Jack Router what ASIO driver you want to use. So here's the ASIO driver, and I'm using Synchronous Audio Router. And Synchronous Audio Router is using ASIO for all so that I can use my native sound card. If you have a regular sound card or a USB sound card with ASIO support or FireWire, etc., you can use that instead of ASIO for all. But just for simplicity, I wanted to try and see how well this worked, and it's working extremely well on my Realtek HD audio sound card. And I'm using 48K-R48K at the right here, and I'm using, for, for the buffer frames, I'm using uh, 160, which is about as low as I can go without getting audio crackles. So if you're getting too many crackles, you're going to have to raise this up. If you raise it up too far, you're going to get too much latency. Another command I'm using is dash capital P95, which increases the priority to the point where it's going to activate the Windows RT thread. And that's right here. You can see that right around there. I'll let that, you can freeze frame this if you wanted to take a look at this. And when you do yours, it should be something similar to this. So how do we get port audio uh, to do this? Once it's on the desktop, you just go to the target and paste, copy paste this line or something similar to it. Change your, you know, whatever audio device you're using, whatever sample rate you want. Now it's default at 44100 sample rate and 512 buffer frames. So if you don't put anything in here after your ASIO driver at the, at the right side of that exclamation point, it'll default to that. But you can change this just by going dash R, whatever sample rate you want, dash P, whatever buffer frame you want. So you'll have to experiment on your system to see what works best for yours. So how do we get this to the desktop so we can adjust it? Now you can also do this through jack control, but I'm going to show you the jack port audio. So we're going to go to the program files, all apps, go down to Jack. There's Jack. Jack port audio. So this is what we right click. Open file location. Once you're here, then here's Jack port audio. Then go send to desktop. Then it'll show up over here on the desktop. And do the same thing for Jack control. That'll be the QJack control router. And I'll show you that in just a second send to desktop so that you don't have to go hunt it down and just click it right from there. Now you do have to run these with admin or it won't work on Windows 10. At least it won't work. It hasn't worked on my Windows 10 without admin privileges. So to activate Jack Audio, once you've changed the command structure to what you want, you have to run as administrator. When you do that, you're going to get this coming up, something similar to this. Then you're going to need a connection bay. So I prefer Cantia, but Jack Audio installs with its own, and I'll show you that again. Jack Control, right-click, run as administrator, say yes, and here's what it looks like. As you see, it's just a lot of uh, numbers, and I find it a little bit easier to wire all this using Cantia instead, but you can test it out this way first. So I'm going to get out of here now. And the other thing you want to think about is how many pins do you need? Do you need four pins? Because it comes default with four pins. So I, you see here I have eight. 
Actually, I have a lot more than that. So let me show you how to get to the pins. So we're going to need to uh, run Notepad as admin. Let's go back to here. Otherwise, it won't stick. You change that. So right-click on Notepad, run as administrator. And now we're going to go find it. Open. So you have to get to uh, Jack. So bear with me here as we hunt it down. And we're going to all files. So we'll go into the 64-bit uh, first. And you see this Jack Router INI? That's what you want to change. So I'm going to right click and open. And you see I have 32 inputs and outputs. Now we'll come default is 4. And auto connect will come as, uh, it will auto connect. So I change that to 0 so it doesn't auto connect. So you need to change that for, and then change it, however, and then of course save it. And because you're admin, running Notepad is admin, it'll stick. And then let's go back to Jack, 32 bits. There's Jack Router I and I. You need to do the same thing with this one too. So just open it and change however many inputs and outputs you want according to the software that you're using. And then we're done. Save it, and then when you're done. Those are the main things to get this done and get Jack Router working. And the, the, other, the only other thing to think about is uh, what are the applications that will work. So any, any application you have for Windows that has an ASIO driver, you can usually get it, with rare exceptions, to find Jack Router as its ASIO option. And then select it, and it'll show up in here, just like this EHOCW did. Let me show you that for a second. I'm just using this as a test tone, but I'm also a Morse code enthusiast. And we have a lot of QSOs over the net, over the internet using that. So go to Tools and Options, and as you see, there's the ASIO Jack Router. Now, we have a lot of other Windows options, but ASIO is included, and Jack Router is right there. That's all you have to do is find that on your application that you want to use. Same thing for Music B. And uh, QSynth was a little bit different. Let me go ahead and show you that. So we'll do the setup. And audio, there's Jack. Audio driver Jack. And that's what you want to look for. And I've only found a few applications that work for Windows. Uh, I think Muse Score is another one, as you see right here. That has a, if you download it correctly at the website, it has one that has Jack support, just like this. And that's opt optimal. So you, if you if it's available, you can do that. And let's see. Oh, the breakaways here. These are just pre meters, and it's using the Audacity input as its listening uh, sound card. So both of these breakaway RTAs, one's a spectrum analyzer, one is a oscilloscope, and they're both using this Audacity input created with Synchronous Audio Router. So if you go to the Recording tab, there's the Audacity input. So I have all audio going to the Audacity input so that we can monitor it or record it. So if I recorded it, we should see that my voice and my microphone is recording. And we'll stop it and we'll play it. There you go. Very handy. So it's nice to have uh, Audacity ready to go and already wired up. And it stays wired up whether you're recording are playing. So when you hit stop, the wires don't fall off. You don't have to rewire everything. That's another great resource for a synchronous audio router and creating your own endpoints here and being able to name them. So that, I think, is just about it for getting Jack Router set up on Windows 10 64-bit. Let me run through this real quickly one time. I think we've covered it all. I think that's about it. Uh, here's an, an interesting application and audio. This will be my last bit of this. If you need to find the exact name, and you need to have the exact name for Jack Router, or it won't work. So you have to spell it just like you see it, with the spaces and the capitals, or the small case or large case, 
are very important, critical, or it won't work. So here is a free application where you can enumerate all the ASIO devices without trying to hunt them down. And that's all the ones that are on my sound card. So whichever one you want to use for jack audio, whether it be ASIO for all, or synchronous audio router, or if you have a real ASIO sound card, which I do, so I could use this one too for jack audio, for jack router. And it would use that ASIO sound card instead of ASIO for all, or in my case, instead of the synchronous audio router. But I found the synchronous audio router so useful that I prefer it as the, the uh, designated ASIO driver for jack router. Thank you for watching.